guys, welcome to Inside the NFL Today. My name is Damon, and today we're doing a continuation of my first mock draft, Mock Draft 1.0, and we're doing picks 10 through uh, 21. So first out, first off, I'm going to talk about the Chargers at number 11 overall, and I think the Chargers are pretty much, this is another one of those picks that, in my opinion, is pretty much a for sure lock, unless somebody else uh, more important drops here that they really need. Um, Lane Johnson, offensive tackle from Oklahoma. I think he's a really good guy. He's gone up uh, draft boards. He's really good in the past, and he's really good, pretty good in the run. He, um, he'd he be a great pick for the Chargers because the Chargers are kind of going through an identity crisis right now. Phillip Rivers used to be one of the top at least 10 quarterbacks, if not top 5 quarterbacks. And now they're kind of going through an identity crisis with they don't really know what they're going to do. So I see this pick being uh, Lane Johnson as... They try to get Philip Rivers some more time in the pocket and improve their run game. Um, Philip Rivers will really this time will really help him, and we'll really be able to see whether he's going to be able to be successful any longer in the NFL. Next at twelve overall, we have the Dolphins. Uh, now in my mock draft, I have the Dolphins going with Xavier Rhodes, uh, cornerback out of Florida State, and I. Uh, I really have him here because I really think he impressed me a lot in the combine. He had a lot of really great measurables. I'm pretty sure he had a pretty fast 40 time, and he had an amazing uh, vertical jump at 40 and a half uh, inches, uh, which is really, really good. And I really think this guy is a great guy for the Miami Dolphins to take when they traded uh, Vontez Davis to the Indianapolis Colts for a second round pick. Uh, this past year, they kind of left a hole at cornerback. They have some depth there, but there's no top-end talent. And this guy is a real guy who they can put in there. And we can see if he can become a top-end talent and really dominate at Miami for years to come. Now, next overall, we have, at number 13 overall, we have the Buccaneers. And I have the Buccaneers taking Kenny Vaccaro safety. And uh, I really have him taking another safety here, even though they took a safety last year, because they really need it. Mark Barron didn't play as well as he needed to. He did have some good uh, plays, but he got beat in a lot of coverages sometimes, especially at the beginning of the year. So um, they're going to be looking forward to get, probably get another safety, address the safety issue again. And this team doesn't have a problem with drafting multiple picks in a row. As we've seen before, these guys, a few years ago, they've drafted multiple defensive tackles in the first and second round and defensive ends in the first, second round. So they don't mind drafting guys in bulk over the pe a few, two years. So I really see him going Kenny Vaccaro because I think he's the best, probably the best safety in the draft. He can do really good in coverage, and he can do really well in um, stopping the run. So I think this is a good safe pick for them. I think he'll do better than Mark Barron did, and uh, hopefully he'll be able to improve that defense. And if he can't, we'll see that maybe it's even something coaching staff problem um, as we've seen, because, I mean, they've gone through defensive picks in the first round a lot of years. So, um, we're going to, this is going to be interesting to see where they go, if they go Kenny Vaccaro. Next, I have with the Panthers, I have Starlo Tulele. And yes, I do have Starlo Tulele dropping it here. That's because Sheriff Floyd is being drafted higher. If you didn't watch my first part mock draft, you should probably go watch that to see who went before these guys. But I have Sheriff Floyd going before him as the number one defensive tackle because I think Sheriff Floyd is better. But I really have them, uh, the Carolina Panthers going defensive tackle and going Star Lutalelli because he drops here. And I think he's worth it. I think he's a good player. A few teams might be scared of his heart condition, which I haven't investigated a huge amount. But they may be scared of his heart condition and all that. But I think he'll be an okay pick. I think he'll be better than this spot. I think he'll be, be one of those guys who should have gone higher. But um, he, the other teams will just have had higher priorities, and that's why he won't have gone until uh, the Panthers at number 14 overall. Now, next I have an interesting pick. Um, for the Saints I, at 15th overall, I have Ziggy Anza, defensive end. And uh, I really have him here because I really think he's a really, really good uh, outs I mean, uh, defensive end. He's really good in the pass rush. And even though he hasn't had a huge amount ex of experience, um, I really think he can do a good job in the NFL. Uh, I think the Saints really need to get a defensive lineman here, and I think this would be a good wise pick for them. So, um, Ziggy Anza at number 15 to the New Orleans Saints. Next, we have uh, Tavon Austin at number 16 overall to the uh, St. Louis Rams. 
Now, this St. Louis Rams as a first pick is uh, kind of an interesting pick because we don't know if Tavon Austin is going to drop here because he is rising up draft boards because people are seeing how quick he is in that stuff. But if he does drop to here, I don't really see any teams taking him above here. But if he drops to here, I think this is a good pick for St. Louis. Yes, they do need to draft the, draft the offensive line, but in my mock draft, I have a lot of offensive linemen going above them. I think I have five total now going before um, him, so I don't think they need to go offensive line because I think a lot of good guys are taken and there's still some pretty good wide receivers there like Tavon Austin. So at um, number 16 overall, I have the St. Louis Rams taking Tavon Austin. Now at number 17 overall, I have the Steelers taking Demontre Moore. Demontre Moore is actually a pretty good... He, he had a lot of good moves in college, but for some reason he did not impress at the Combine. He had horrible numbers. I don't know why this was... Uh, maybe we'll see him do better at his pro day, but for right now, I have his stock uh, dra dropping because of that perform poor performance at the Combine. I would not take him in the top 5 or top 10, and I see him dropping to the Steelers at n number 17 overall. He he could be a solid guy, and he probably just had a fluke at the Combine, but as for now, I see him dropping to the Steelers. Uh, next, at number 18 overall, I have the Dallas Cowboys drafting Sheldon Richardson. Now, this is more one of those more interesting picks because, in my opinion, Sheldon Richardson didn't particu particularly impress me a whole lot whenever I watch tape and stuff. But I see where his talent is, and I see where he does have some talent. I just saw some really bad things about him. And uh, he may impress me more in, as draft day comes up. But right now, I have the Cowboys taking him here because I think he is the third defensive tackle in the draft. He may even be behind Jonathan Hankins out of Georgia, but I've got to look at those guys more before I decide um, if Jonathan Hankins is going to go higher. So for right now, as my 1.0 mock draft, I have Sheldon Richardson going to the Cowboys at number 18 overall. Now, number 19 overall, I have the Diamond Giants drafting Desmond Trufant. Now, Desmond Trufant wasn't even on a lot of people's radars last year, and uh, I really have him going here at number 19 to the Giants because I think he's a fantastic player. He's actually, in my opinion, he may be better than Xavier Rhodes, which I have being drafted higher than him right here, right now. But uh, I really think uh, Desmond Trufant can do a really good job at the cornerback position. And his stock may even draft higher, and you may even see him being drafted in the top 15 instead of number 19 to the Giants. It really depends on what teams take above this. I have a lot of defensive and offensive linemen being drafted, so that's why the number third corner, three cornerback uh, drops to the Giants here. Uh, next we have the Bears, and the Bears get one of the biggest value picks in the first round, to me in my opinion so far, at Barrett Jones. Uh, for some reason, a lot of people don't have Barrett Jones drafted high, high, and that's because their teams need one specific position on that offensive line, and the Bears kind of need help all over. They don't really have a huge amount of good guys. Gabe Karimi did actually a pretty good job, but other than him, their other guys were pretty bad. Um, there were a few guys that did better than expected, but as, overall, they didn't perform well enough. They needed to give Jay Cutler more time if they plan on winning a Super Bowl in the future. So I think they should go Barrett Jones here because he can play center, guard, tackle. He can go where you want, and he has an amazing worth eth work ethic and an amazing attitude, and he's an amazing person, so he's not going to have any off-the-field issues. He's going to work hard. He's going to become better than he is. He, um, he works harder than his talent. There are certain players that are just talented and they don't really work that hard. And then there are certain players like Barrett Jones who may not be as talented, but they work amazingly hard, and that's what makes them look so good. So that's why I have the Bears at number 20 overall, drafting Barrett Jones right here. And my final pick for this video, Bengals. Uh, I have Barkevious Mingo slipping to here. Now, um, a lot of you might be flipping out because other mock drafts have Barkevious Mingo going higher. I watched tape on Barkevious Mingo. I love his pass rush ability, but... They didn't drop, have him dropping in coverage a lot, and that bothers me. Um, unless he goes at, he ends up playing defensive end in the NFL, which I think he should be outside linebacker rush. Um, I, I don't know. I really think he he's a good place here because he's dropped. I didn't think he did as well in coverage, and that's why teams don't draft him higher. And I think you'll probably see his draft stock drop like they, he did in my draft. And I really don't think he deserves a higher pick because I think all the guys above him are either more talented or those teams just need got different guys. And for some reason, Barkevious Mingo isn't going there. So that's why I have Barkevious Mingo to slipping to here. Um, he could end up being a pretty good player, but I, I, see, I saw some lack of coverage talent from him in the college world. 
and that's what will make his draft stock uh, drop this low. So uh, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, this may have been a long video. I haven't checked the time because I don't count the time, but this may have been a long video. Apologize if it was, but I really wanted to get this video out, and I want to apologize to people. I told you guys yesterday that I was going to post this video. Uh, I actually started trying to make it, and then I had some real problems with my phone, and I don't, I didn't know what was going on, so I just decided not to even make it that day, not to even continue, because I've been backed up with a lot of homework being this the final week before spring break. But those problems are over. I figured out how to do it on my phone, and I have this video out now. Uh, so tomorrow I'll be posting part, uh, I'll be trying to post uh, part three of this on Friday, and tomorrow I'll be posting the Tennessee Titans offseason overview. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you liked the video. This is my mock draft part two out of three. What do you think of my picks? This is where it kind of gets difficult, so some of these picks may be really controversial. Um, actually, probably more than half of them are, but this is where it gets really interesting. My next video will be even more interesting because a lot of those guys, people will have a lot of problems with probably. So leave your comment. Try to be nice about it. Uh, don't act like a jerk or I'm just going to delete your comment and block you. Honestly, it doesn't take me that much time. Don't be a jerk. Um, if you want to comment and you disagree with me, just say I don't think they're going to go with that. That's a lot better answer than being a jerk and saying I'm a retard or something like that. So uh, thanks for watching. Please rate, comment, and subscribe.